We are at the Nadia Country Club Tennis Classic in Louisville, Kentucky. We catch up with Justin on Zoom and talk some of the recent refereeing dramas and told a few tour stories. Enjoy the episode. Hot today, Justin's favorite topic. We're gonna talk about referees to start off. Do you want to talk about the correct call, the incorrect call, or the debatable call? Which one do you want to go with first? We start with love. Give me the correct one. Okay. The correct call was the double balance in this very match. So Justin, why don't you take a ta- your time to say, you know, give your props to the referee. For once on this podcast. Mohamed Leani, you did a good job. You your eyes were open and you saw the ball bounce twice. And I got You it. had to put it that way. <laughs> I I got a clap. I got a clap for that. That's that's what I done. That's what I done. You did you did it. You did it. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> we won't go too much into that one. But we can go into the other one. So the next one is the the crazy one to me was the Stan one. The one of the Stan and Kabali match. The Carlos Bernardes. Well, bro. First of all, like it happens where you're playing a match as a player and the score gets by. You know, like you, you're not really paying attention and you lose track of like maybe you lose track of the score in the game or you lose track of is it three two or four three, like those kind of scores. Mm-hmm. But I've never seen it where especially at the top level where there's multiple teams watching. There's Kabali's team and Warinka's team, like people are in their box, their coaches, whatever. No and one, no one notices. No one, it. no one notices it, and it was the only break of the match. Yeah, that's the thing. Jeez, but how did Stan not even notice? Like, I, yeah, I thought that, I thought that, that was strange. I mean, it's happened where like I've lost track of the score, you know, but it's not happened where, like, for example, if I'm practicing and Beggy's watching the practice. I lose track of the score. He knows the score. Like, every, like. But don't talk to me about practice, bro. This is not the same. <laughs> not the okay, same. but in a match too, it's happening. Yeah, in a match. You've never you, lost. You don't. No, you've never lost so. track of the score in a match. I don't think I have, bro. I have all the time, all the time, all the time, Jordy. All the time. <laughs> I would say it's happened more than ten times that I don't know the score in a match. Like, either the games. I don't know if it's three two or four three or you know, like it's happened like that one two two three three four or like. Are it you competing? What are you? What are you? What are you what this are you is Jody's doing? math. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's not good with numbers. Didn't have to do that. Didn't have to do that. But it's not happened where like everyone around doesn't know the score. Yeah, like yeah, Warinka's Warinka's team, whoever he had in his box, didn't say anything. Two things. Two things. Do you think Kowali knew the score? Probably. You think so? Probably. You think that nobody on the court knew the score? You think that Carlos Bolas didn't know the score, <laughs> Fabrega didn't know the score, Kaboli neither? Someone Here's my second question. Score. Here's my second question. You know in juniors, right? Like when, <laughs> let's say you and I are playing and we don't agree on a score. It's okay. five all and I'm saying it's juice, you're saying it's Someone, uh, you bring the ref over. Bring the ref over and you guys argue about the, co- the score uh-huh. and the, you have to go back to the last time you remember. So you have to go back to one all, you know? <laughs> so the last score you guys the last agree score you on. Guys agree on, and this is where we disagreed is at one all. The last time I remember is one all Thursday. So what happened in the Kabbalian stand match? If it, it gets late and then they're like, "Oh no, you made a mistake at this point." Do they have to go back to that point? Like, what is it? What's the rule in the pros? But this is different because this is the referee's mistake. Yeah, but what's the rule? Yeah, they should get fined. They <laughs> <laughs> should get like a strike against the the record or something. But in terms of the match, I don't know, bro. I feel like first of all, they must they, they be... must have they must have some accountability thing with the referees. They have to. They have to. That. You keep saying that. Yeah, because but... they has to. There has to be some sort of system. So they must be. We got to get someone from the ATP on here to talk about this because or referee. You want me to get the referee on? I can get the get referee. referee on. Get it up. I'll just go out tomorrow and ask one of the referees, hey, you want to jump on the podcast this week? <laughs> yeah, because... Come I meet don't... Justin. I'm going to be so excited <laughs> come to come meet Justin. <laughs> Bro, I don't understand how it how it happens, but what would they do? 
I think at that point it would have to be some sort of fair play thing. You know how like I don't know, I'm playing at UTR and we both agree on a Congratulations, ball. by the way. Clap it up. Let's clap it up. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's clap it up. Clap. Sorry. There you go. <laughs> uh, and then we this guy's calling all all fifty eight lines and and if we both see something different than him, we can say to, to each other, yo, this is actually what happened. This is your point. We play on. What can Stan and Kabali say when it's six three and someone goes to Stan and said, Oh, by the way, it was not love dirty, it was fifteen all. What You mean after say? the match is done? At five three, forty fifteen. Like what like what are they gonna do then? You mean if they remember at that point? Yes. <laughs> done. <laughs> it's over. That's not what you can do. You let it go too far. That's I feel like if a couple points pass, somebody could be like, oh, actually, it's... Like, against the forty fifteen, he could have been like, oh, it's actually 30 odd. You know? Like, that would be a fair thing to do, but... That might be one of the craziest situations that I've seen, like, at the top level. Did you see Nikira's quote? I mean, uh, his uh, tweet? We have it here somewhere. We have it right here. He says, Bernardo should have been five years ago. How does this happen? Potato. <laughs> <laughs> Do you agree with that? Like, not about, but not specifically, but if people habitually, not habitually, but players tend to have an issue with a certain umpire that this guy, that he should be fired? No. Uh, well, it depends. I mean, at some point, yeah, but like, I don't, like, I think, I think there, there has to be something in place for like, some sort of strike system or some sort of like... Think about Jody is that it, it always has to be something. It has to be, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that it always has to be something in place for these things. I don't know. I don't I don't believe it. Justin, there's not... How many referees do you think they have, have in the world at that level? Like, refereeing is not easy. You know? No, I think you can... There's a thing you have to do to get People, to a certain level. I think you qualify for a certain level. But I don't believe... I don't know. I've never read a rule book or a referee's handbook. But I'm not sure that there's a way... For them to demote referees. I don't think a referee makes it to the ATP. No, no. I think for sure the better referees get the bigger matches. I'm not talking about getting smaller matches. I'm talking about getting, like, punished, like, penalized. Like, you... Sent to the futures. Yeah. <laughs> if a big referee... If a referee is doing well, then he goes to the big matches. And he's not doing all the big... big. He's not... He's making mistakes in the big matches. For sure, they're not going to put him back on the big matches. Like, think about Bernardes, for example. This, this, this is not enough, bro. <laughs> What's not you know, but you don't know. You Are don't they getting know. bonuses for play to, for doing like the grand final? Are you they getting like? Know, a, but you don't I'm know. Like, you. I don't know, but I'm saying you also don't know. You know, <laughs> so you're saying it's not enough, but you don't know what's enough and what's not. So enough. you think you, you think that while well, we're having a tennis tournament, they're having a referee tournament, and the guy who does the grand slam final is getting paid more, <laughs> or he's going to get recognized at the, at, the, at, the, at the final. He's going to get a recon recognition and a little. Yeah, but I'm saying he's going to be able. But I'm saying he's going to he is able to. Be in those matches because no, of his even better than than getting paid the same is getting paid the same and doing less matches. Like leaving the mean? Grand Slam, what do you mean, what do you a mean? referee signs up to do a Grand Slam. It's a two week job, three week, but okay, three week job, whatever. And they're getting paid based on whatever the days they work or what? I don't know. I'm not talking about money. I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about how, the how the performance effect. Their bottom line, like they have to feel it the way that. We feel it. <laughs> but they want to. They want to. They don't want to stay on the outer courts forever. Like, like the referees that are the futures, they want to move up to charges. The ones that are charges want to do the ATPs. The ones that are the ATPs want to do the, the big matches at the slams. That's how it works. So, like, tell I don't know. How, tell me how they fall from tour level to challenger level, and I would like to see like that process because you've never seen. You've never been at a tournament and seen the supervisor reviewing the performance of a referee you've never seen that i've seen it in terms of like qualifying for something i, I don't know if i've seen it like like no, but if if it's happening for a referee to get a certain badge for sure it's happening for a referee to maintain a certain and now standard. when i say for sure you say no 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 no. But when okay, you okay, say okay, it, I must, okay I definitely not for sure definitely not for sure but i, I have i find it very hard <laughs> to imagine very hard to imagine that there's not a system in place for when these guys do good and bad you know I don't know. I just think that it's it's a high stakes environment. Correct. But the stakes are much higher for the players, but the referees also have a hand in the results for the players. And if they're making these blatant mistakes, they should be penalized. And that's where I stand. And I don't 
I don't know if they are being penalized behind closed doors, like it's like a little slap on the wrist, or it's like <laughs> like it's like a it's a little talking to from the <laughs> supervisor. Oh no no no! <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but something needs to be done, at least publicly. Like how in the NBA they get a call wrong when they do the reviews, the next day they issue a statement. This was the wrong call. Blah blah blah. The, the result doesn't change, but at least there's some sort of acknowledgement that we messed up. That's but there's, so maybe, there's so never maybe, ever. Yo, so maybe we can say. Maybe we can say. Let's start with some communication. Let's say that. I just. I. I want at least the my bad. <laughs> yeah, but you don't know if that's not happening. Suppose that's happening. It's not happening to you, but it's happening to like. When they example, say, they also say this. They say, uh, make the apology as well as disrespect. I want the world to see that you were wrong. Like, like, and own it. Admit it. Don't just come to me in the quiet and be like, hey man, I messed up. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. All right, we That's can move on to the next one. The next one is the the Francis one. This is the one that's debatable to me. Like, so I didn't see the first time violation. Did you so see the, the first, first one? one happened in. I heard it was a cough. It happened in the no. The first one happened in the, in the second set. Like he was a, he was like a set and maybe four or something like that. Set and deep in the second. He goes to the line and it goes down to zero. He's bouncing the ball. It hits zero. Time violation. Whatever. Nothing happens. Move on. And it, then it goes to the end of the third set at 5 6 serving love 30. He goes to bounce the ball. He starts coughing and it runs out of time. And the guy calls time violation, which is pretty rough. Like if it's a real cough and he wasn't like faking a the cough, then. I so wait, pretty the first one... The so first he had one two is, before the tiebreaker yeah. one. So the first one is just a warning, and then the cough was a first serve? Yeah, you, take, you, lose, you lose a serve. And then the third one was also a first serve? The third, the third one was 5-5 five, five, five the tiebreaker. Tie break. yeah. yeah, he had to play a second serve. He lost the point, and then Safilin aced him to win the match. So... Here's my question. I thought it was. The, I thought the, if it was the third one, it's a worse... Is there a worse penalty? Not, I don't know. But here's my question. Do you guys think that given the situation at five on the third, the referee could have chosen to give him an additional three, four we seconds? Think, I think the referee was being absurd. Like, the man is at the line now. Like, if, if Francis was still at the back by his towel or, like, halfway to the baseline, that's one thing. But at that point in the match, you don't want to decide the match on... These little technicalities when it's not really it's not really delaying game. I think the point of the shot clock is to not delay game, and I don't think Francis was really doing that. I think he he was a bit I don't know dumb dumb about it the way he did it with the toss, like he just walked up and like flung the ball up to try to like get a loophole or something. He's like bending the rules, kind of. Yeah, because I guess he knew the guy was being a stickler. I guess he thought maybe. If I at least get into a motion of some sort, he will be understanding. But this guy looked like, I don't even, he's like one of those strict teachers who don't just get away with anything. It's like, he's on every, every little, every little rule. And I just think that it's sad that he intervened in much that way. Okay. Personally. On the flip side, on the flip side, you're the opponent and you're in better shape than, than who you're playing against. And it's physical rallies and you can see your opponent's out of breath. And the referee's giving him an additional three seconds. Yeah, no. I think that... How do you feel in that situation? I don't... I think that the referee's being a bit of, of, a, an, anu, of an anuitance. Like, if, so, so, you're, so if you're the opponent and you see that, you see that your opponent is tired mm-hmm. and he's about to serve at five all and the referee gives him a few more seconds, you're okay. But get me wrong. I'm taking the thing. I'm taking the point if the referee gives him the... Or I'm taking the second service if the referee gives him the code. But, but are you upset if not, the referee doesn't? But it's if, not like Francis was so. ten seconds late. It's not like uh, yeah. If, yeah if, Francis, if Francis was o- like over the top late every time, it's like annoying. He's delaying game. But if he's there at one second to go or zero seconds to get at the line, I don't care. I'm ready. To, I'm ready to play. We're in the flow of the match. He's not breaking the flow of the match. Hey, what's up, guys? Sorry to interrupt the episode. If you're able to, it would mean a lot to us if you could subscribe to the channel. That's the best way to support us. Help us to continue to make cool episodes with cool guests and really gives us the best chance to grow as a business. Thanks so much and enjoy the rest of the episode. 
You think so too? Yeah, I agree with so, what Justin said. Yeah. So if you see him out of breath, but initial one or two seconds is not big. I wouldn't be like, oh, time violation now as soon as the clock hits <laughs> zero. Like, what is he doing? Is this but it's the third one. It's the third one. So he's done it a few times in the past. You know? Yeah, but come on, bro. Like, there's, there's like, there's a human element to tennis as well. It's not, it's not this like binary, like super strict thing. There's like a bit of a flow of things, and I think you have to. I don't want to say play with that. You have to be... <laughs> you have to read the flow. <laughs> you have to read that, I think, as a, as a referee. Like, like, just like in football, like when they have the injury timeouts and they have the extra three minutes, they don't... It's not three minutes past and they go... Shh. They, let, they let the last play kind of uh, finish and then, okay, game done. You know, like it's not, it's not an exact science. It's just these are guidelines for us to make sure the match doesn't I will take seven say, hours. I will say that I think when it comes to like like bigger players like you know in the past it'll be like Djokovic, Nadal, Fed like like in certain situations these guys can get away with a lot more than like are they calling that on ball. Novak at five all in the third set breaker yeah probably not and would they also yeah. what I learned when I started when I played a challenge I learned that they start the time after they call the score so it's not like you hit the ball points down but is that still the case now because I'm not sure about that oh well as far as I know I know it used to be like that it's like when they call the score, is when the time starts. So, yeah. like, I'm sure when Rafa played uh, one of those world beater points or whatever and the crowd's going crazy, they wait he's until... He's not, he's not calling the score right as soon as the ball... 15 all, 15 all, 15 all. <laughs> You know? So probably what is 20 or 25 seconds turns into 30 to 40 seconds. Yeah. Just naturally based on the way the game is being played, you know? Yeah, I agree. I think it's just five ball and third is just such a hard time to, to lose a first serve. You know, like we came here to watch tennis break. tennis players play tennis, bro. Don't don't make this don't intervene in that way. Like if someone is doing something that's unfair, okay. But I don't think Francis is being unfair by yeah. getting to the line at yeah. twenty seconds. Like it didn't seconds. look like it didn't look like he was trying to be slow or he was no, deliberately he was trying to like, win the tennis match. I think he realized like when he was behind he tried to just toss. He saw that he definitely saw that it was like one second and went Ew. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But I think if, it was, if he didn't have any time violations in the past, he just accept the first time violation of the match and then just hit the normal first serve. Yeah. But in that situation, he tried to bend the rules. And then I guess he took the moment and then he exploded. And obviously that should never happen. Like what he did at the end should never happen. Like he probably knows that. But like... Oh, after the match? Yeah, after the match. But like the the call itself, I think I agree. Like he, the referee yeah. probably shouldn't have gotten... What do you think the the punishment should be? And I'm gonna give you I'm for Francis. You, yeah. So like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I don't even want to get into that. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even want to get into that. What's up with this guy? To be honest, anyway. <laughs> yeah. But did you see? This is one of the things. The um, you know the two sisters, Andreeva and Andreeva. I saw today they played for the first time. Huh? They played for the first time. The younger one is the one that's ranked higher, right? He's the famous the- one. Yes, the older one is is the one who won. Right, Much older, three and one. Uh, I want to say she's like a couple of years, maybe she's like nineteen, twenty, something like that. She won three and one, right? And WTA posted about it and posted the result. And in the comments, she's getting they're getting absolutely ripped. The sisters because they're saying that the older sister, uh, the the younger sister, who's the better sister, um. Let the older sister win. Why did you put it on <laughs> the coach? Because she, I guess she's ranked higher, but she lost. So I don't know, you know. But okay. But um, so in the comments, everyone's saying like they're saying that it's fixed. Like such an interesting match. Clearly, the mental block was too much. Um, <laughs> she can beat Sabalenka, but can't beat her sister. Hmm. And then, <laughs> I don't say definitely fixed all this stuff, bro. One is like 20 in the world, other one's like 70 in the world. Why are these people acting oh, like acting it's impossible? Like it's, yeah. it's impossible for someone 70 to be 20 in the world. What are they talking about? Like, on the men's side, that's becoming like less crazy too. But especially on the women's side that we've seen for years, like they've, it's always been a bit of a musical chairs with the, the tournament. So I don't think that it's crazy that a woman 70 beats a woman 20. And, so and their sisters, like it, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. And it's not, it's, it's definitely not easy to play a sibling. So, and if there was it's hard, pressure, it's hard for me to play against you. And if there was pressure, 
First of all, you've never lost. So what do you mean? <laughs> but I'm saying it's, a, it's uncomfortable. It's an uncomfortable scenario. Yeah. But, but like, and if there was to be pressure, it would be on the one who's ranked considerably higher by people's standards. Like 50 I, spots higher is not, like, a crazy difference. But, like... I gotta beat my sister. Like this huh? matters, this matters yeah. at the dinner table when we go home. Not, not just on, <laughs> online. Like, I gotta see her, you know? Yeah. I just don't want that to be ridiculous. But, yeah, um, that's, but yeah. yeah. But the comments are the comments, bro. There's never, you're never gonna see a positive comment section all the way through. No chance. Yo, the block list on Instagram is growing by the day. Is it? By the day. Yeah, yeah, by the day. It's so it? easy. I just, I know the routine now. Boop, 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 block, quick, <laughs> quick. Don't even look. Yeah, yeah, quick. Uh, okay, the next thing is the, um, I don't think Evan has seen this story at the Kamal Shadek story. So, this is from who was it on Twitter? Tennis tennis legend or Yeah, yeah tennis it. legend. In a message he sent tennis legend on Instagram, Clement Shadek ranked at the time two hundred and eighteen in the world. Want to tell us about a nice gesture made by Harold Mayo, ranked hundred and seven in the world, in his in his favor before the Rowan Challenger. After his victory against this is Clem's uh quote, after his victory against me. Harold decided that he would not go to Rowan, which was the next tournament, the next mm-hmm. challenge after. Mm-hmm. Being seated and having used all of his uh, late withdrawals, he could only withdraw on the spot. He would have had to have been fined 2,500 euros if he didn't go to Rowan. You know all about that. <laughs> um, after his defeat in the afternoon, so, okay, so Clem 2, lost. 2,500. Huh? 2,500 euros. Yeah, that's crazy. Clem lost to Mayo. The next day, mm-hmm. Mayo lost to Pui. Uh-huh. So he knew that he he knew. So Mayo knew that Clem was first out of out of Rowan. Uh huh. And um, he drove. Mayo drove to the next tournament to withdraw before quality started, so that Clem can get in mm. to to the main. Because if he if he gets there late, it's just what a lucky loser or something. Yeah, exactly, mm-hmm. lucky loser. So he made the effort to drive at night. After his match finished, so that he can pull out the next morning before quality started, in person in in Rouen, and he did that for Clem, and then Clem ended up maybe what quarters, and I know he won at least one round. Maybe he went quarters, and he's now like live rankings about two hundred or one ninety nine, which is unreal. But um, would you do that for anybody in the shout United out to a real one? Would I do that for anybody? Yeah. How far is the drive? <laughs> Does it say how far the drive was? Uh, he got in around 1 a.m. Oh. So a couple hours, maybe? Let's say three hours drive from 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. Three a. hours? Are you driving three hours for me, Evan? Yeah, I do it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I do it. <laughs> but what if, what if it's just a compatriot? Like, you're not close. It's like... But they're probably boys. I would assume that they're boys. But it's the difference between, like, you and Evan and someone that you know. I'm, I'm not saying that, that. I'm not saying I'm not I'm saying that they aren't close. I'm just saying if it was just you're, like you just want to know where we draw the line. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Um, are they coming up to me specifically asking for this favor? Did he ask? I mean, you're not doing it. You're not doing it. <laughs> so don't even do this. Don't even do this. If yeah, Evans at the tournament, more times Evan doesn't even watch someone's match. Like Evans just inside. I remember one time we <laughs> where were we? We were in Yo, my bad. Niagara. You remember this? Yeah, I remember. We were in Niagara. <laughs> it's me, just me, Evan, and AJ at the tournament. And Evan plays. He finishes his match, and AJ was on next. So I sat there through Evan's match, sat there through AJ's match, and after Evan played, he went to like Subway or something. <laughs> just gone <laughs> while AJ played the match. Yeah, gone. No, don't care. Easy, yeah. but I will bad. say I will say though I don't know if you've changed, but I will say in the past you also didn't care if people watch you. Oh That's yeah, true, right? That's, yeah, it's whatever. Yeah, um, that's a that's a very what do you call that? It's a classy move by Mister Mayo. Like, I don't know if I'm getting that done. On a, <laughs> on a, on a, I know that a... I know that you're not getting that done. But a Saturday night at ten forty-five p.m. making a three-hour drive. To, to withdraw somewhere. John's, Justin's hitting the pregame yeah, before yeah, he hits sure. the drive. <laughs> it's been a good week. Let me go have some yeah. drinks. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> funny. That's well done. That's yeah. well done. No yeah. chance. All right. Um, so, we are in Louisville this week. 
and we have finally learned the definition or the the, the reason that the podcast called the Pairs and Players podcast, why they got their name. And you know the pairs stand for the parents? Did you know that, Justin? I did not know that. And I, now you do know that. But um, they were kind parents, enough. Parents and kids, parents and players. Yeah, there you go. And they were kind enough to host us this week, so we would like to publicly say thank you. Because uh, it's all about being public. You know, going <laughs> yeah. to Justin. Can we say thank you all the time in private? But now we're going to be saying it in public. So thank you so much to Scott for housing us this week. Um, it's been an unreal setup. You know, we have a place to stay. He's been helping us with some food. Um, we have a car. Unbelievable. Can drive to the courts every day. So That's what separates the good housing from the elite housing. <laughs> from the great when housing. They, <laughs> when, they, when they, okay, when they house you, unbelievable. Thank you so much. When they feed you, wow. Now you, <laughs> you're making memories here. You give me a car too. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We are no, friends, been friends for life. And and um, Scott's son, who plays, he's what sixteen, sixteen. Um, we have an audience in the room. I didn't know. We have an audience. Yeah, it's a live show. Live show. <laughs> you know, but um, he also has come to the course with us every day and warmed up Evan one day, one, practiced with me twice. Out. We play. Watching our matches. Yeah, watching our matches, support, and we played a double set against, uh, what was it, day before yesterday, against a couple of guys. Um, so, yeah, he's been, like, the whole week has been it's been unreal. And um, Evan and I are in the semis. We played a great match tomorrow. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, walkover? Yeah, walkover. For those Who pull people. out? I believe, I believe, room on the street is. So, so in our section was three Louisville teams. Okay. Right? We won the first round. And obviously the other two teams played each other. And rumor has it that they have to leave to go play uh, like one of the fall tournaments. That's an interesting scheduling then. <laughs> so why why would the tournament be hosted this week if my boys have to go and play? They have other obligations, you know? So would they have put a little bit out of singles as well? Like if a guy made quarters of singles, would they have told them to come to this fall tournament? Justin? I don't ask questions. I show up, I play my little tennis. <laughs> I mean, you would think this university they would they would have thought it through, you know. But I will say, I will say that the not your country club guys are doing a great job. Like, mm. I, I think maybe they might be slightly. I don't want to speak for them, but I feel they might be slightly overwhelmed with the balance of like recording and editing and releasing. Because so at the end of the day, it's only two of them. And I think they probably have helped. Maybe it's three of them or something. I don't know. And the matches finish, like, what, around 6, 7 o'clock? Yeah, so. yeah like we, went, we played at 5 o'clock yesterday. And they were there. By the time we got there in the morning, they were coming in. And obviously, they stayed until the end. So, yeah, what I'll say is that the quality of their content is great. The idea that they have, like, they're doing, they have, like, a little press room where they've done interviews. Oh, the press room is cool. It looks... You done one? Right? No, I haven't done one, but... I saw a Rabo had one today. Yeah. I don't get why we haven't been in there. Oh, you... <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but, no, they've been doing a great job. Like, they filmed some of the practice sessions. They've done, obviously, a bunch of matches. They have the press room. That they're doing press conferences. I think that... In my opinion, and I, and I know I talked to them a bunch about it, they they have big goals. So, like, I guess people can see this as, like, a teaser as what they're capable of. And then when they, they know now from this experience how hard it's been um, balancing the, the recording to the release to all this stuff, that they can have a team, a big enough team that they can, like, do bigger events. But, like, mm -hmm. unrealized. They've been really good, in my opinion. So... Yeah, bro, like, the content looks really good. The the camera that they have, or the cameras that they have, that's like, I feel like I'm in Louisville when I open my Instagram. <laughs> Yo, yesterday I took a picture. Like, they asked me, can you just take this picture for me? And literally, he put the settings on the camera. So all I have to do is hold the camera like this and just press the button. Like, all I have to do is just literally shoot. And that, he put the camera behind him like this. Like, heavy. Heavy camera. That's a real camera, not that whole... Like great you get camera the, by the way. You get the pro <laughs> camera. You get the pro stocks. Yeah, <laughs> the pro stock. we're using the Walmart bats and he's using the pro yeah. stocks. 
but oh, that's cool. no it's been it's been great like talking talking to them and just learning from them about the content and that sort of stuff and um is it live streaming the tournament as well it like, is not interesting oh it is it is live streaming i stand corrected once again mr scott from the pairs and the players he's the pairs of the of the, <laughs> the podcast <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah it is live streaming so we'll find out would you guys prefer to stay in free housing or free hotel for a week of tournaments well, it depends because no car. You don't know, but you don't know what you're getting with the housing. But but then again, I'm just generally almost, speaking, brother. But then yeah, I would say out of all the houses that I've gotten, they've almost always been great. So probably housing, probably housing. Okay, Evan. Most mm-hmm. families have dogs. I like dogs. One hundred percent. <laughs> mm. hotel when I do hey Scott if he says hotel right now he has to go <laughs> he's got to go I'm gonna just go if we don't know who the housing is hotel for sure. I'm just gonna pick whichever one's closer to the site if I don't have a car but hotels come with transportation normally very political oh that's true yeah but the, but 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 if you have hotels yeah, yeah. if you have hotels right uh-huh. You can do the membership, like the Hilton all and all that. I don't even and you can do start that. Racking, you need to do that. Yeah, you can start yeah, racking yeah. up points, so in, and later on in life, you can be like, yo, boom. I holiday. just feel like if Evan's not going with a friend, he'd much rather stay in a hotel and not have to... Not Talk. have to socialize <laughs> as much, you know? Like, he could just get to the room and just... He's done. As opposed to, like... Not that he's not a nice person, but having to, like... <laughs> Be nice and be respectful. Tell us how you really feel. You know, I think he would prefer a hotel. Of that. For sure. People are coming at me on, on Instagram and, and YouTube saying, like, I talk so much and Evan don't talk. Like, if I'm the reason that Evan don't talk. No, I'm talking a lot because Evan doesn't talk. You know, if I don't talk and Evan don't talk, we're just going to be sitting here in an interview. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Sometimes... Yeah, Less Before the podcast started, Evan was like having a conversation. I almost said to him, "Yo, be careful! You'll lose your voice." You know? <laughs> <laughs> we got we to record tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have business to do tonight. Um, have you ever had a? Horror I didn't story? speak all day just for this. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, quick break. Justin here from the Changeover. I'm gonna talk about Pro Stringer. It's a great machine that I use, Jody uses, and a lot of other pros use as well. You can use it at home, on the road, really anywhere. There's a tabletop surface. It takes me about 25, 30 minutes to string a racket on this machine. It is easy to travel with, fits in carry-on, suitcase, tennis bag, no issues at TSA. It's a big money saver. And you can save even more when you use our code CHANGEOVER to get $100 off the machine. Back to the episode. Have you ever had like a bad housing experience? Me? Like without naming names, just... I don't think so. Uh, Oh, oh. I didn't have this experience, but like we were in Harlingen, Texas, uh-huh. um, and I was reaching out to the director for housing. And I think most of the times in the U.S. when you would reach out to the directors for housing, they do it by main draw. You know, they go main draw first, and if there's extra, you know, extra families or, ho- or hosts, then they would do the qualities. So I was in qualities, um, and I reached out to the director, and he's like, "No, we don't have anyone." Blah blah blah. blah. All right, no problem. So now I'm expecting to get the hotel. And then I play the pre qualities. And at the pre qualities, the director texts me and he says, Hey, I found housing for you and the case Moamba. So you're going to stay by this person's house. I can't remember the name of the person. Um, and then I see the case at the courts and say, Oh, yo, we're going to be housing together, blah, blah, blah. All good. Whatever. And then later that day, the person who we're housing by is at the course and comes and introduces himself to me. I said, hey, nice to meet you. I'm Jody. I was polite, all this stuff, whatever. And then I said, yeah, like we'll be in touch later today and blah, blah, blah. And I left the conversation and I Put thought, the hotel. I thought there's absolutely no chance I'm going to this house, you know? And I saw Nick Case and I said to him, I was like, yo, are you staying at the housing? He's like, no, I'm not no. staying at the housing. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? What was it that put you off? Um, 
the vibe. I would just say the gentleman wasn't. It didn't. He didn't seem very put together, like in control, you know, of okay. the situation <laughs> at hand. So, okay. um, yeah. So I just said I would be rather be comfortable and not do that. And you know what's actually funny is that week was actually less comfortable. Be, like I stayed with that week. I ended up staying with um, Tarek and Andre Sala. You remember that? Oh yeah. Like in Calif- they were in California train with us, and. I, Andre, you're probably not going to watch this podcast. I'm going to send this to you so you can watch this. But him and his dad would argue nonstop. Nonstop, they argue, right? <laughs> All right. So we're staying in the hotel room. is two beds and an air mattress. So I think... Oh, I think I remember. You remember that? I think I remember yeah. this. So I think I'm staying... I'm staying on the air mattress first, right? Because obviously it's the father and his son is in the tournament too. So I'm the guest. They're doing me a favor. I'm sleeping on the air mattress. Fine. I sleep on the air mattress... I play through qualies and I qualify and I think he loses in qualies, right? So now he tells his son switch so I get the bed so I can <laughs> sleep normally, which is fine. Like, oh, that's nice of you. Okay, I'll take the bed. So I go in the bed now, but they argue nonstop, right? And they're leaving the next day. And like, Tarek used to be on, like, on him. Like, make sure you stretch. Make sure you take your protein, like, on him, you know? And... I think he was upset at him for the day. He's like, did you take your protein? He's like, no, I didn't. He's like, you take your protein? And he, they're not saying this nicely back and forth, right? So then he paused. He says, where's the protein? He said, oh, I packed it away. He said, well, you better unpack the protein and take it, you know? He unpacks it, pours the powder into the cup, right? And then more time goes by, he still hasn't taken the protein. So now uh, the dad slaps the cup of protein, <laughs> Protein powder flying everywhere, all uh-huh. over the bed. Chocolate protein on my bed now that I'm sleeping in. It's midnight and the lights are still on. I have a match the next day. You right? <laughs> right? And then not only does he say to clean it up. First of all, the dad knocked it off and then said to the son to clean it, clean up. it up. Not only had to clean it up, he had to take the sheets down. So now the sheets are off the bed. I have no sheets on the bed. <laughs> midnight. Midnight at the tournament. You know? You took your sheets too? No, you think the powder got the on your sheets? My sheets. How much powder, brother? Thank you. I'm thinking, yo, just dust that off and roll. But no, yeah. To teach. No, I was teaching him a lesson. Go wash the sheets. He has no, to wash the hotel bro, sheets. <laughs> a lesson too. No, he is taking the hotel sheets to the public laundry room <laughs> to wash the sheets. It's but midnight. I play first off tomorrow. If you don't, dust that off. There's no water in the powder yet. It's just powder. Just dust it off. Yeah. I've slept on worse. I was on a mattress last night. So you just slept on cold air mattress, dirty. Brother, what do you not understand about he had to go and do the sheets and come back? I slept in warm sheets. The sheets were brand you, new. You waited up to go to sleep? You you can sleep with lights lights on? I mean, I can't. Tired enough, I'll find a way, yeah. I'm sure I was falling asleep, but like he had to come back on and put the sheets on the bed. It was a lesson to him. Andre, I, I don't know if you, you probably do remember that. <laughs> but thank you for Tarek, your experience. Really huh? That's a situation where you don't want to pick the hotel. The Tarek didn't really read the room. The, he wasn't uh, worried about your your next day. Nah, but he's a good guy. Tarek is a yeah. good guy. No. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Guy. Next on the okay, on the uh, you had another would you rather, no? Well, not really, but I had a question. So like, what do you guys normally eat on changeovers, if anything at all? I used to eat Cliff bars. I haven't been doing that for the past couple of years. Just a banana. Boring. Cliff Bar is kind of crazy, no? Is Cliff Bar crazy? It's like a lot of food. During the match? Feels like heavy, no? No, I'm not like the whole Cliff Bar on one changeover. <laughs> like one bite every changeover. <laughs> like the... I could fat, do a banana. The fat square ones? Yeah. Like the little Z-bars. Uh, no, the fat square ones. Sponsor us. Chocolate chip? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, chocolate dip. Chocolate chip. Did they have like a white macadamia nut? Yeah. Just sponsor us. I'll eat one clip by every change or if you want. One full one. Yeah, I will. I only play double video every change one. much. You would notice saying, imagine just saying, hey, use code change over. You get 5% off a cliff bar pack of six. Chocolate <laughs> 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 macadamia nut. <laughs> well, I guess it's brought to you by cliff bar. I'll be better. You just see it just... pop up on the right side of the yeah. fifth part all the time. <laughs> you eat anything? You eat anything? Uh, sometimes a banana. That's it. Yeah. So I've been, I've been taking the the honey gel, the like honey stingers. Also sponsor us. We would love to do it. <laughs> Anybody sponsors, you know, really. <laughs> At this point, but I, 
but I ran out of of those, and I was playing the PTT last week. I was in the I was playing the final, and I was exhausted. So, so I like... start. I started the final, the third set, <laughs> and I was dying. Like I no energy left, and I just looked at Beggy and say, "I just give me a Snickers or something." And I go to pass him my card. He says, "No, he paid for it." He comes back ten minutes later. He gave me a Gatorade, a pack of Skittles, and some famous Amos cookies. <laughs> but I was I was like beast mode on the sideline. I was eating I was eating Skittles. I was eating Skittles. And do you feel like it helped? I know I've heard of some people eating yeah Skittles or beast? like Sour Patch Kids. Or it was Beast like Mode or DK DK Macau. A couple of them, I think. But it's also I think it's also uh, Marshawn Lynch. Yeah, Marshawn Lynch. But uh, the Skittles actually gave me a boost. Like I think it's the same as drinking the honey. It's just like it's straight it's straight sugar. Do you think the boost was long enough? It got me through. Brother, you know Matthew Calvis from Naughty Country Club. Well, inside a, inside a tennis, the photographer. Yeah. He is like on his shit about mm. diet. So he gave us a speech yesterday. Like he was like, so he put an element pocket in a regular size water and he started drinking. He's like, you can catch a shark in this bitch. Like he was like, it's so salty. Like <laughs> he couldn't drink it, you know? Uh-huh. And then he was saying that, um, I was saying, yeah, like, we, you know, that's what we drink. Like, it's so good. Like, I was like, oh, it's so good for you. Element is so good for you. Justin drinks like five of them a day. He'll drink one before practice and a few pra- going off, you know, and he's probably, and then he goes like, yeah, I don't know if I'll be drinking that many of these a day. This is not that good for you. And I was like, what do you mean? Then he starts like reading the ingredients out on the back of the thing, you know? And I thought Element was like the, like out of the hydration things. I thought that's like one of the best ones, you know? So then he told me they have this app called Yuka. You heard of this? Y-U-K-A. Y-U-K-A. And they scan. You can just scan you scan anything. any barcode at a supermarket and you can see like, I haven't done it yet, but like you can see the ingredients and all this stuff and if it's good for you and bad for you. So this might... Did you look at it? Huh? You look, element you saw? No, this was last night. So I haven't done anything yet. I just, I just downloaded the app. So I'm going to test it out and see, test the theory. Bro. But this man is like he as doesn't eat. Know, man it's... say he didn't, hasn't had McDonald's in ten years. Never had Chick Fil A. I'm like you need to like, enjoy life a little bit. Or chill, 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 chill. <laughs> but as far as I know, it's just salt, magnesium, and potassium. Like that's exactly what you need to. Um, Amen. I believe that they are great ingredients because we want you to sponsor us because we love your product. <laughs> 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 I just did every day. It's actually right here in my in my cupboard. I can't reach it now. But by the way, can you bring some for me next week? Actually. I forgot everything, by the way. Can you bring my try to? I don't know. With the hurricane, I don't know if I'm going to get it in time, but I'll try. No, it's there. I left it. I left it there. Oh, yeah, yeah. And my protein. And my protein. Left that there, too. Anybody you know had any weird uh, food things on the changeover? You ever seen anything weird? Anything as weird as a set of carrot? It? Who was it that was talking? Was it Sloan that was eating sushi one time? Thanks. I heard that in a, in a clip. But was that pre much or during a much? Doing much. There was someone doing that, and someone. Was there's no coffee. way Sloan was eating. There's no way Sloan was eating sushi during a match. Pretty sure. Pretty sure it was Sloan. Sloan with sushi, cinnamon with carrots. Someone was drinking. Someone was drinking. Um, coffee, espresso. Coffee. What yeah. is that? Varinka. I probably, I can see that. So wasn't it Mutet who was complaining? Someone was complaining about they asked for a coffee and they wouldn't bring him the coffee. That's funny. Um, but I've had it. I've had a coke on court before. If I was like dying, like it. It helps. Sloan Stevens was eating sushi at... Is there a picture of that? There is a picture of that. Chopsticks? Want to see camera? Right there. Too high. Too... Whoa. We'll put it up on the screen for you guys. Where was she at? Australian Open. Sloan, you're a bit different. That don't make no sense, bro. Australian Open is chilling, eating sushi. And chopping people. Did she win that much? I hope she won that much. I don't know. I'd write that screen. Anyway, yeah. Um, yeah. Want to run a game before we roll out? Any more updates, by the way? We have some new subs, by the way. So thank you to all the new subscribers. If this is your first episode um, since you've been on the channel, I think our episode with Dustin did really well, much better than we thought. Like We knew there was going to be an interesting discussion. We didn't expect that the video or the episode would do this well this quick. So it's been great. Viral on, on our terms, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> it's, us, it's like our fourth best episode in performance so that's huge for us so if this is your first time watching us um we're a change of a podcast couple of, couple of professional tennis players 
You know what I mean? Talk it on, <laughs> talk it on camera. <laughs> we got a ball head, a mute, and a... <laughs> Call it. And what, Justin? <laughs> All right, we're going to play a game here. Uh, first, the three correct answers. You know the deal. We got some tennis trivia, some other trivia. And you can answer. Oh, no. And no math. Third out the answer, definitely math. Third out the answer, if you get it wrong, I don't want to answer. Try again. We move on. First, the three. Look how comfortable I am, Satan. So comfortable I am. You lost it. You lost the last game, though. You better. Yeah, but it. I'm on like a. I'm trending upwards. <laughs> Question number one. What is the name of the hurricane about to hit Florida? Melton. Mm-hmm. That's that's Evan. What do you mean that's Evan? I heard. It, he... I heard. I heard his M first. <laughs> I heard it first. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. Eh? Who is the number one ranked men's male player? Oh, men's, men's male. male. I should lose a point for that. Who is the number one ranked male player from the Czech Republic? Jesus. Lechka? No. Oh. I don't even... I don't even know tennis like that. <laughs> <laughs> On the tennis podcast, that's crazy. From the Czech Republic? Yeah. I think this one's a skip. I'm going to give Jordy another chance. One more chance, Jordy. I'm going to give you guys a clue, actually. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> he beat Andy Murray this year at the Miami Open. My shot. Yeah. Wow. One one. Wow. Do you ask? Scott knows everything, by the way. Scott's ball knowledge is insane. Ball. <laughs> <laughs> ball knowledge. You're calling that his ball is un- is unreal. All right. All right. Um, who is the number one men's player from Argentina? Uh, I don't think it's this guy. I don't think it's... Is it him? I'm just going to guess. Serendolo? Not right now. He's number two. The other one is 26 in the world right now. I have, I have a guess up. lined up. i give you five seconds. Who, Evan? Yeah. I don't even... I can't even think... The only person coming to my head is De Potro. <laughs> Are you serious? You should get mine as well for that. Jody, second guess. Navoni? Nah, Sebastian Baez, 26 in the world. What's Navoni right? He's like maybe 30s, 40s, but I haven't, I didn't research him today, sorry. What's the Diaz Acosta right? Bro, I researched, I researched Baez today, bro. I'm sorry, <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> my bad. All right, so we had one one still. Fun, sir. Okay, first to two. First to three. Oh my God. 64 minus 29. No, you're good. Uh, 35. I don't answer math questions anymore. That's so sad, bro. I've retired crazy. from math questions. I'm not doing it. Two, you're one, ever. You're not going to set me up like this. If this is all you want to win with cheap shots, you can. <laughs> you, think, you, you, you think that you're you losing is me winning? Correct. That's exactly <laughs> what it is. That is exactly what it is. Every time. Every time. Look at the draw on your face right now. You sick my hater, bro. Okay. <laughs> Next question. Next question. Who won Shanghai 2023? Last year. No clue. clue. Shanghai 2023? No clue. No clue. And that leads me to the next topic. Here's the question from Roddick, right? Roddick was talking about this on the podcast with the PTPA, and he was saying that he thinks that the scheduling, sorry to interrupt the flow of the game, uh, Quizmaster, he was saying that the scheduling um, crazy. he thinks that they should move what the ATP finals up a month yeah. and then just run 250s at the end of the year yeah. where he thinks that the people who play 250s are not the people who are contesting for ATP Masters and like big events mm-hmm. so what do you think of that actually of that idea I think that it's an interesting proposal I don't know how it work out mathematically I guess the players who play the finals HP finals have a choice to play after that point, but they probably, they probably wouldn't need to. They wouldn't get overtaken. And it's good for the players who want chances to get points, who are like, let's say, I don't know, 10 and below, all the way to, let's say, 200 in the world. I think it's a cool idea. Like, it would definitely help the top 10 guys in the world get some rest. 
like not have to play November and December. But I don't know. I think that the whole tour needs to kind of have a stop at some point, you know? Like, I think this would just be a way that would keep the top, top guys healthier than the rest of the guys and probably even create a bigger gap over time, I think. What do you think? I think... I think this guy's ever talking. Just kidding. <laughs> but sorry, how it's not that much different than guys play futures into December. Yeah, I guess at that level. So like, maybe it's a good idea. Like I don't know. Maybe it's a good idea. I think it'd be best if there's nothing. But if there has to be something, then that's probably better than what it is. I wonder right how now. well the right direction. How well could they do without the idea that a big player is gonna come and play? You know, like what yeah. if there's. What well, if this is a few weeks of 250s and you just know that the top 15, 20 players are just going to shut down for the year and they're not going to come play 250s? Then... What, I mean, what's, like, will it sell out? Yeah, what's the, the draw? The, like, that's the that's draw. what I thought about. Because I, I agree. Like, I like the idea in the sense of, like, he's right that the top, top players probably don't see 250s as a big, like, points chase, you know? But, but we're saying that they will play if they're paid enough. So, like, instead of playing exhibitions in November, December, they might still play some 250s, but they would just get mm. super high appearance fees. Yeah. So they probably, they probably still, a good one, they probably would still play, but it gives them the option. Yeah. So I don't know. I think it's better than what we have now, but I don't know if it's the answer. If we're talking about extending careers and not having guys injured by October, November, you know, like I feel like maybe they have to dilute this year a little bit like maybe a few less tournaments and then maybe like stop it at a certain point where like no one can play for well, maybe Clement mid- right you have the mid-season break yeah the something mid-season. like that yeah. maybe they have a shutdown like nobody weeks. plays in August <laughs> yes yeah, so Clement can see his friends yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. <laughs> alright yeah sorry to sorry to interrupt the game alright what's the score 1-1 one, one? what two, one. oh 2-1 two, one, trying to hook. Two. Two one and we don't know who won Shanghai last year. We do not know. No, Alcaraz. Which is it? Alcaraz. Alcaraz didn't win a match, bro. A dang. Last year he was he was struggling. Okay. What? Yeah, he was hurt. Hurt and like not not playing very well in it last year. Okay. Who is the current world number three? Yen. Medvedev. That was a random guess. I don't know. Well, this is not good. Huh? Uh, almost rare. Right. <laughs> yes. We call it a match, buddy. This was a, a rough game. Extended game. When is it not rough? Pause. <laughs> well played. Um, so Good luck in your match tomorrow, fellas. We won already. That you already won. Uh, well, I hope you guys go all the way. Hopefully. I, I will link you boys in uh, Wednesday. I hope by the time this episode is dropping on Saturday morning, we have a match to play that day. I also hope Milton doesn't destroy everything. That is true. That is true. Oh, you want to meet someone, Justin? Hey, it's a good thing that Justin's not here because he doesn't like dogs. If I want to meet someone, it's how you know these guys are just doing stuff for the content because me and Frank met an hour ago <laughs> <laughs> before this episode started. He's acting like this is a this is a brand new thing, right here. <laughs> hey, 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 dog! I wish you on the bus, dog. But uh, but yeah, people, we yeah. Thank you for watching again. Thanks for all the new subs. Thanks for supporting. We are in Winston Salem next week, and we have some stuff lined up for you guys. We have hopefully a vlog lined up. Um, we'll also go live on Instagram. I mean, on YouTube again next week, and then. Frank wants to say something, sorry. Yeah, so we have some fun stuff lined up and we're excited to keep keep working. We have some momentum and we're gonna keep going. So yeah, thank you for watching and see you next week. Mm-hmm.